All right, let's talk about Mesh AO. So to demonstrate this, let's hit the comma key, go into the project, demo projects folder, and let's go ahead and load up this demo tree frog here. Now this is for a thick skin demo, if you wanna know more about thick skin. If we go to the ZBrush 2021.5, it's actually starts at video 56 in the 2021 What's New playlist. Let's see, there's uh, more info on that. But what we're here to talk about today is as of this recording underneath Z plugin, we're gonna go ahead and drag this over here into this left area. And you may notice I have probably a lot more plugins than you do if you haven't downloaded or installed any. Uh, this one's going to come with your install of ZBrush. You don't need to worry about grabbing it on your own, but if you wanna get some more of these plugins that are actually uh, really useful, you can go over here to the uh, pixelogic.com ZBrush Download Center, and there's a bunch of ZBrush plugins. The ones up here at the top should come with ZBrush. The ones down here uh, don't come with ZBrush, but check these out and you can go through here and you can download those. And for info on how to install those, you can go to the uh, Intro to ZBrush, ZBrush for Ideation, video number 35, and then I'll tell you how to install ZBrush plugins. It's pretty easy. So now we've said all that, uh, let's go ahead and go over here to the ambient occlusion area. And if you've been using ZBrush for a while, uh, you may remember that there is a masking mask by AO functionality over here. So if I have the frog selected and I go over here and I say mask ambient occlusion, that'll go ahead and mask. And if I want to see this mask a little bit better, what I'm going to do is go in here to the material palette. I'm going to change it to flat color. And I'm also going to go in here underneath preferences, edit, and down here, you're going to see uh, masked object dimming. I'm going to crank that all the way up to five so we can get the full effect of that AO. So this is functionality that has been in ZBrush for a while, uh, but there's not as much control as uh, what you're gonna get over here under the uh, Z plugin ambient occlusion. So what we're gonna do is, so here's here's that result. Uh, now I'm gonna go over here, I can control drag if I want to get rid of this mask. You can also go over here to masking and you can clear your mask or invert your mask. You know, if we can just do a quick masking tutorial, you can hold down control and you can mask and you know, mask pin if you hold down control and go up here we've already talked about in the earlier videos you know mesh balloon and making meshes for masks but mask basics again you can find in that intro series over here you know masking options and masking basics video 22 and 23 but essentially you have hotkeys for uh, basically everything you want to do with masks you can click the blur a mask control alt click to sharpen a mask up control tap to invert a mask control drag to get rid of a mask so but you can also do it over here in the masking menu but anyways, we're gonna go over here to ambient occlusion and uh, we're just gonna hit the compute button. So once we've done that, this is the result we get. And again, this is a mask. So if I go over here and I change it back to the startup material and I start sculpting. So let's go ahead and grab maybe a clay brush and we can start sculpting here to see it's going to leave all of the areas that are masks with ambient occlusion alone. It's, it'll allow me to sculpt but it's not gonna allow me a sculpt, obviously, where uh, the object is masked. Now, we also do have on this one thick skin turned on, so that was why I was limiting the amount I was able to sculpt out. Now, this is a very soft mask. Again, if I switch back over here to flat color, and if you're working on something and you're like, you know, it's, it's got a lot of color on it, you can go over here and just turn off that colorize option, that little paintbrush in your subtool menu. So again, this is a very soft result, and part of that's because we have smooth turned up to eight. So if you turn this down to zero and recompute, you're gonna see it's gonna sharpen up a little bit. Now, you may notice that around the eyeballs and around the belly where it's touching uh, the ball that it's sitting on, it's not getting any ambient occlusion. And if you look up, like if in the room you're sitting in, you look up in the corners of the walls, you're gonna notice where those corners come together, it's gonna gather a little bit of darkness in there. The light's gonna have a little bit of a harder time gathering in the corners of the rooms. And it's also gonna have a hard time, you know, where two objects meet. So we kind of wanna build that into the ambient occlusion. And luckily we do have an occlusion volume option. So we can go ahead and turn that on. And you can see it's going to be going through and calculating all the other subtools in your scene. Now you're gonna see we do have a resolution slider down here. That's the resolution of your occlusion volumes. I'd be, 1024 seems to be fine. I would be careful about raising that any higher. Uh, it's really gonna increase uh, the time spent of it calculating, especially if you have a very complex scene with a lot of subtools. Uh, but now that we've done that, if we recompute this, you're gonna see now we have that contact ambient occlusion from that other subtool and every other subtool in the scene. It was a subtool of the eyes and the sphere. We're getting ambient occlusion around the eyeball and the sphere. And if we go over here into solo mode, you're going to see here's the belly of the frog. And again, we're getting that nice ambient occlusion contact shadow. So in here, you have the distance slider. That's going to be how far it's going to search out for adjacent subtools that are next to it so it can calculate the ambient occlusion from those subtools. 
Samples is going to give you a higher quality, uh, you know, ray traced result. Uh, but it's going to take a little bit longer. But this one, I don't mind cranking up. It's the resolution one that usually ends up really increasing me, cre increasing my uh, render time. But you know, we'll hit compute on 544 samples, and you see it goes pretty fast still. Now the smooth option is kind of a post process. Uh, you know, if you change the smooth and then hit compute, it'll go really fast. It's you know, you don't have to sit there and wait for it to recalculate. Uh, it'll just kind of do it really quickly. Now, if you ever switch between subtools, in this case, I'm going to Alt-Tap in my screen to uh, get the sphere, or you can go over here and select it in your subtool. Let me go ahead and hit Compute. You can see it turns the entire thing black. So in this case, let's recalculate. And then hit Compute. There we go. So now this is getting... Now, this low-res effect that we're getting is because the geometry itself, if we turn on our polyframe, you can see the geometry itself is very low-res. So when it's baking it into the vert positions, you know, you're getting a low-res result. So if we go ahead and control drag to unmask, and let's hit control D a couple times. And now when we hit comp uh, after we hit compute, we get a, a much higher res looking result. So if you're ever going to switch subtools, you'll need to recalc and then compute, and it'll go ahead and bake that AO for you. Or if you ever make any changes or position changes to your subtools, obviously you'll have to recalculate. Now, if you alt tap back on the frog, again, this is a mask. And because it's a mask, you have a little bit of leeway here. So you can actually go into masking. There's a mask adjust in here. You're going to see here's a profile and a blur. So we can, if we want to blur out that mask, we can, we can do it here and that'll blur it. It's a little bit different than the smooth. Uh, we can also go in here and adjust this uh, profile here. So if you hit apply, that'll give us a little more contrast. You can also hit reset and just keep hitting apply and like changing these curves and seeing if that gives you a better or you know, kind of dial in exactly that AO that you're looking for if you're, if you're not getting it with these options over here. And again, it's a mask. So if we want to say sculpt on this, we're going to go back to our startup material here. You can see we're masked. And again, we went into preferences, masked object dimming. So it's very, very heavy. If we want to drop that back down, we can turn that back to four. And then there's the usual look when you have a mask. And we can go again into our clay brush. And as we're sculpting, it's going to leave all the masked areas alone and only allow you to sculpt in the areas that are unmasked. Of course, you can also use this with poly paint. So we're going to go down here to skin shader four. You can either start painting. We can go to B, P, A for our paint brush, and that's just turning RGB on. So we can go through here and we can start painting on our frog. Uh, of course, as soon as we start painting, it's going to turn that colorize on. And now you're going to see we're painting with red. If we control tap to invert our mask, and then we go over here and we start painting with another color. Now you're going to see it's only going to allow us to paint in the areas that are unmasked. So we can control drag to get rid of the mask, and there's our result. Of course, you can also go through here, let's undo back. You can go up here to color, fill object, and as long as your RGB intensity is on, you have RGB turned on, just go to color, fill object, and again, we'll control click to invert our mask, go down here to kind of a redder color, go in here to color, fill object, control drag, and we can unmask. And if you want to change this, this is a ZBrush 2020 update, I believe, we can go down here to our poly paint, and we can say adjust colors, and now you have access to changing, and again, your poly paint is painting on the vertex points of your object. And again, if you want to know the basics of poly paint, it's the same uh, ZBrush for ideation, video 42 uh, goes over the basics of poly paint. But essentially you can go through here, you can now hue shift the result of that paint that you did. You can change the saturation, the intensity. You can even select individual colors. If I want to just change the red parts, I can click and drag onto the red. I can go through here and change the tolerance to get more or less of that. And then again, I can just hue shift that red to another color, hit OK, control drag to unmask, and that's our result. So that's our AO uh, masking walkthrough. You get a lot of control over here, so uh, that might be useful as you're going through, and again, you're poly painting and you're sculpting.